Trams in Melbourne Trams are a major form of public transport in Melbourne, the capital city of the state of Victoria, Australia. As of May 2017, the Melbourne Tramway Network consists of a double track, 493 trams, 24 routes, and 1,763 tram stops. It is the largest urban tramway network in the world, ahead of the networks in St. Petersburg, Upper Silesia, Berlin, Milan, Moscow and Vienna. Trams are the second most used form of public transport and overall boardings in Melbourne after the commuter railway network, with a total of 206 million passenger trips in 2017-18. Trams have operated continuously in Melbourne since 1885. Since then they have become a distinctive part of Melbourne's character and feature in tourism and travel advertising. Melbourne's cable tram system opened in 1885 and expanded to one of the largest in the world, with a double track. The first electric tram line opened in 1889, but closed only a few years later in 1896. In 1906 electric tram systems were opened in St Kilda and Essendon, marking the start of continuous operation of Melbourne's electric trams. Victoria's public transport system was reorganized in 1983 and saw the Melbourne and Metropolitan Tramways Board absorbed into the Metropolitan Transit Authority, which was in turn absorbed by the Public Transport Corporation in 1989. The network has been operated under contract since the commencement of franchising, following the privatization of the Public Transport Corporation in 1999. The current private operator contracted to run Melbourne's tram system is Keeley's Downer. Trading as Yara Trams Ticketing, public information and patronage promotion are undertaken by Victoria's public transport body, Public Transport Victoria. The multimodal integrated ticketing system, Mickey, currently operates across the tram network. At some Melbourne intersections, motor vehicles are required to perform a hook turn, a maneuver designed to give trams priority. To further improve tram speeds on congested Melbourne streets, Trams also have priority in road usage, with specially fitted traffic lights and exclusive laneness being provided either at all times or in peak times, as well as other measures. Melbourne's first tram was a horse tram from Fairfield Railway Station to a real estate development in Thornbury. It opened on December 20, 1884, and was closed by 1890. Seven horse tram lines operated in Melbourne, three were built by the Melbourne Tramway and Omnibus Company while the other four were built by different private companies. The MTOC's three lines fed their cable tram system, Victoria Bridge Cable Tram Terminus to Q, opened in 1887 and closed in 1915 after its sale to Q Council for conversion to a Praran and Malvern Tramways Trust Electric Line, Hawthorne Bridge Cable Tram Terminus to Auburn Road, via Burwood Road, Power Street, and Riversdale Road opened in 1890 and closed on January 31, 1916 after being sold to the Hawthorne Tramways Trust for conversion to electric traction, and the Sea Line, from the Royal Parade Cable Line to Melbourne Zoological Gardens, opened on March 10, 1890 and closed in November 1923. The Sea Line was Melbourne's last horse tram and the only line still in operation at the formation of the Melbourne and Metropolitan Tramways Board, however it was destroyed by fire during the 1923 police strike. The MMTB took the decision not to reopen it, thus sending Melbourne's horse tram era. Melbourne's cable tram system has its origins in the MTOC, started by Francis Boardman Clapp in 1877, with a view to operate a Melbourne tram system. After some initial resistance, he successfully lobbied the government who passed the Melbourne Tramway and Omnibus Company Act 1883 on October 10, 1883, granting the company the right to operate a cable tram system in Melbourne. Although several lines were originally intended to be horse trams, and the MTOC did operate three horse tram lines on the edges of the system, the core of the system was built as cable trams. The Act established the Melbourne Tramways Trust, which was made up of the 12 municipalities that the MTOC system would serve. The MTT was responsible for the construction of tracks and engine house, while the MTOC built the depots, offices and arranged for the delivery or construction of the rolling stock. The MTT granted a lease to operate the system until July 1, 1916 to the MTOC, with the MTOC paying 4.5% interest on the debts incurred by the MTT in building the system. The first cable tram line opened on November 11, 1885, running from Burke Street to Hawthorne Bridge, along Spencer Street, Flinders Street, Wellington Parade, and Bridge Road, with the last line opening on October 27, 1891. At its height the cable system was one of the largest in the world, 
with a double track, 1,200 grip cars and trailers and 17 routes covering. On February 18, 1890, the Northcote Tramway was opened by the Clifton Hill to Northcote and Preston Tramway Company. This was Melbourne's only non-MTOC cable tram, built by local land speculators and was operated as an independent line, feeding the Clifton Hill line. When the lease expired on July 1, 1916, all the assets of the MTT and MTOC cable network were taken over by the Melbourne Tramways Board. The MMTB was formed on November 1, 1919, taking over the MTB cable tram network, with the Northcote Tramway and the Tramway Trusts transferred to the MTB on February 20, 1920. From 1924 the cable tram lines were progressively converted to electric trams, or abandoned in favor of buses, with the last Melbourne cable tram operating on October 26, 1940. The first electric tram in Melbourne was built in 1889 by the Box Hill and Doncaster Tramway Company Limited, an enterprise formed by a group of land developers, entering from Box Hill Railway Station along what is now Station Street and Tram Road to Doncaster, using equipment left over from the Centennial International Exhibition of 1888 at the Royal Exhibition Building. The venture was marred with disputes and operational problems, and ultimately failed, with the service ceasing in 1896. After this venture failed, electric trams returned on May 5, 1906, with the opening of the Victorian Railway's Electric Street Railway Electric Street Railway from St Kilda to Brighton, and was followed on October 11, 1906 with the opening of the North Melbourne Electric Tramway and Lighting Company System, which opened two lines from the cable tram terminus at Flemington Bridge to Essendon and Saltwater River. The Victorian Railway's line came about when Sir Thomas Bent became Premier. A corrupt politician and leading land boomer, he stood to benefit from construction off the line, through the increased value of his large land holdings in the area, and pushed through the legislation to enable the building of the line by the VR in 1904. The VR tram was called a street railway and was built using the Victorian Railway's broad gauge instead of the cable tramway standard gauge of, and connected it with the St Kilda Railway Station which would allow trams to be moved along the St Kilda Railway line for servicing at Jalamont Yard. The line was opened in two stages, from St Kilda Railway Station to Middle Brighton on May 5, 1906 and to Brighton Beach Terminus on December 22, 1906. A fire at the Elwood Tram Depot on March 7, 1907 destroyed the depot and all the trams. Services resumed on March 17, 1907 using four C-class trams and three class trams from Sydney which were altered to run on VR trucks salvaged from the fire. These trams sufficed until Newport Workshops built 14 new trams. The St Kilda to Brighton Beach Electric Street Railway closed on February 28, 1959 and D was replaced by buses. VR opened a second, standard gauge, electric tramway from Sandringham Railway Station to Black Rock on March 10, 1919. It was extended to Bumaris on 2 September 1926. The service was withdrawn on November 5, 1956 and replaced with buses. The North Melbourne Electric Tramway and Lighting Company was an electricity and tramway company that operated from 1906 to 1922. The tramway section was taken over by the MMTB on August 1, 1922 and the electricity section taken over by the State Electricity Commission of Victoria in 1922. The Victorian government of Sir Thomas Bent approved an application by Mr. Morgan to build a tramway system in the Essendon area on March 29, 1904, with a poll of ratepayers overwhelming supporting the proposition on July 29, 1904. Mr. Morgan transferred the concession to the Melt, which had been formed to build the system and provide electricity to the area. Under the concession the Melt was to construct a tramway and provide electricity within the municipalities of Essendon and Flemington for 30 years, it also mandated a service at least every 20 minutes and had provisions for the undertaking to become property of the municipalities involved earlier than the prescribed 30 years. Then Melt bought land on Mount Alexander Road for its offices, car barn and powerhouse, with the foundation stone laid by the mayors of Essendon and Flemington on May 24, 1905 and the first rail laid a month later by Premier Bent. The system opened on October 11, 1906 operating two routes from Flemington Bridge, one to Essendon via Mount Alexander Road, Pasco Vale Road, Fletcher Street and on to Mount Alexander Road again, and the second to Saltwater River via Mount Alexander Road, Victoria Street, Racecourse Road, Epsom Road, Union Road, 
and Mare Burnong Road. The system was approximately and was operated by 25 motor cars and 10 trailers. Due to demand for better public transport in Melbourne's inner suburbs of Praran and Malvern, the Praran and Malvern Tramways Trust Act 1907 was enacted. Councillor Alex Cameron of Malvern, who led the push for a municipal tramway service, was elected chairman of the trust by both Malvern and Praran councils. Construction began on its first tram line in 1909 with the first passenger service commencing on May 30, 1910. Using overhead wires to feed electricity to the trams, the network continued to expand greatly and profitably. In 1913, the region covered by the PMTT was extended and, thus, representatives of the Hawthorne and Kew councils were also included on the board. In 1916, Camberwell Council representatives were also included. Following the PMTT, the following municipal trusts were formed. The Melbourne and Metropolitan Tramways Board was formed in July 1919 to take control of Melbourne's cable tram network, six of the seven electric tramway companies, and the last horse tram. By 1940, all cable and horse tram lines had been abandoned or converted to either electric tram or bus operation. Alex Cameron was its full-time chairman. The tramway network had both cable and electric traction and had been constructed by different bodies without any uniform system. Under Cameron, the MMTB brought these systems under its control, extending the electric lines, and converting the existing cable system to electric traction. To solve operational and maintenance problem the MMTB introduced in 1923 the iconic W-class tram and phased out the other models. The Preston workshops were constructed about this time to manufacture and maintain the new tram fleet. In March 1923 Alex Cameron went overseas to investigate traffic problems. He returned next year confirmed in his long-held opinions that electric trams were superior to buses and that overhead wires were preferable to the underground conduit system. Alex Cameron remained chairman there until 1935. He died a few years later in 1940, the same year the last of the cable tram services in Melbourne ended. The MMTB generated further patronage by developing the enormous Waddle Park in the 1920s and 1930s. It had inherited Waddle Park from the Hawthorne Tramways Trust with the HTT's takeover by the MMTB. After World War II other Australian cities began to replace their trams with buses. However, in Melbourne, the Burke Street buses were replaced by trams in 1955, and new lines opened to East Preston and Brunswick East. Melbourne's tram usage peaked at 260 million trips in 1949 before dropping sharply to 200 million the following year in 1950. However usage defied the trend and bounced back in 1951, but began a gradual decline in usage which would continue until 1970. During the same period bus use also went into decline and buses have never proved as popular with passengers as trams at any time in Melbourne's history. By the 1970s Melbourne was the only Australian city with a major tram network. Melbourne resisted the trend to shut down the network for three major reasons partly because the city's wide streets and geometric street pattern made trams more practicable than in many other cities, partly because of resistance from the unions, and partly because the chairman of the MMTB, Sir Robert Reeson, successfully argued that the cost of ripping up the concrete embedded tram tracks would be prohibitive. Also, the infrastructure and vehicles were relatively new having replaced cable tram equipment in only the 1920s 1940s. This destroyed the argument used by many other cities, which was that renewal of the tram system would cost more than replacing it with buses. There is a 1960s color film called Citizen Tram on YouTube commissioned by Recent 2. By the mid-1970s, as other cities became increasingly choked in traffic and air pollution, Melbourne was convinced that its decision to retain its trams was the correct one, even though patronage had been declining since the 1950s in the face of increasing use of cars and the shift to the outer suburbs, beyond the tram network's limits. The first tram line extension in over 20 years took place in 1978, along Burwood Highway. The W-class trams were gradually replaced by the new Z-class trams in the 1970s, and by the A-class trams and the larger, articulated B-class trams in the 1980s. In 1980, the controversial Lonnie Report recommended the closure of seven tram lines. Public protests and union action resulted in the closures not being carried out. The MMTB, along with the Metropolitan Railway assets of Vic Rail, were absorbed into the newly formed Metropolitan Transit Authority on July 1, 1983, while the regional assets of Vicrail were absorbed by the State Transit Authority. 
the MTA was formed to coordinate and operate the Melbourne public transport system. During 1986-87 an integration of rail, tram and bus divisions took place, with the operations, maintenance and administration of these departments fully integrated by April 11, 1988. The MTA introduced a new green and yellow livery and uniform design, with a new logo, showing the integration of Melbourne's public transport system, replacing the MMTB logo, and introduced a new time-based integrated ticketing system, for all modes of Melbourne's public transport. An automatic vehicle monitoring system was introduced in 1985, improving communication with drivers and allowing tracking of trams throughout the network. This reduced tram bunching and improved reliability of tram services. The St Kilda and Port Melbourne railway lines were converted to light rail lines in 1987, with the lines closed on July 1, 1987 and October 11, 1987 respectively. Trams first ran on the St Kilda line on November 20, 1987 with Port Melbourne following on December 13, 1987. The conversion consisted of the track being regaged from broad gauge to standard gauge, the overhead wires being converted to tramway voltage and light rail platforms built adjacent to the former station's platforms. As a result of the Transport Act 1989 the MTA and STA were emerged into the Public Transport Corporation on July 1, 1989, bringing all rail services in Victoria under one body. By the late 1980s, the state government was under financial pressures brought on by an economic downturn. In January 1990, the Labour government of Premier John Kane tried to introduce economies into the running of the public transport system, including the removal of tram conductors. This provoked a long and crippling strike by the Tramways Union in January 1990, resulting in a backdown by the government and the retention of conductors. In the 1992 state election, the Liberals came to power under Premier Jeff Kennett, who planned to cut the costs of Melbourne's public transport network and remove conductors. One link were contracted in 1995 to introduce an automatic ticketing system. The Tramway Union, which opposed this move, went on strike during the 1997 Grand Prix. One month later the government announced plans for privatization of the PTC. The tram conductors were replaced with ticketing machines between 1996 and 1998 shortly before the system was privatized. On July 1, 1997, in preparation for privatization of the Public Transport Corporation, Melbourne's tram network was split into two businesses, METTRAM 1 and METTRAM 2. VicTrack, a new statutory authority within the Victorian government, was created in 1997 to hold the ownership of land and assets relating to Victoria's tram and rail systems. In addition, a statutory office was established the Director of Public Transport, to procure rail and tram services and to enter into and manage contracts with transport operators. After a tendering process the businesses were awarded as 12-year franchises, with Swanston Trams won by National Express, and the Yarrow Trams business B Trendstep TSL. Following a transitional period, the right to operate the two tram businesses was officially transferred from the government to the private sector under franchise agreements on August 29, 1999. National Express renamed Swanston Trams as M Greater Than Tram, similarly along with its M Greater Than Train suburban train business, on October 1, 2001. After several years of failing to make a profit, more than a year of negotiations over revised financing arrangements with the government, and grave concern over its future viability, National Express Group announced on December 16, 2002, its decision to walk away from all of their Victorian contracts and hand control back to the state government, with funding for its operations to stop on December 23, 2002. The government ran M greater than tram until negotiations were a completed with Yara Trams for it to take over responsibility of the whole tram network from April 18, 2004. On June 25, 2009, it was announced that Keolis Downer, a joint venture between Keolis and Downer Edgy, would be the operator of the Melbourne Tram Network from November 30, 2009. The contract is for eight years with an option for a further seven years. As a part of the privatization process, franchise contracts between the state government and both private operators included obligations to extend and modernize the Melbourne Tram Network. This included acquiring new tram rolling stock, in addition the existing tram fleet was refurbished. Swanston Trams introduced 59 new combino low floor built trams by Siemens, at a cost of 175 million Australian dollars, and invested approximately 8 million Australian dollars in refurbishing their fleet, 
Wayaro Trams introduced 36 cities low-floor trams from Alstom, at a cost of 100 million Australian dollars, and invested 5.3 million Australian dollars refurbishing their fleet. In 2003, the marketing and umbrella brand Metlink was introduced to coordinate the promotion of Melbourne's public transport and the communications from separate privatised companies. Metlink's role was to provide timetables, passenger information about connecting services provided by several operators, fares and ticketing information, and introduce uniform signage across the Melbourne public transport system. Since privatization extensions have been made to the tram system, with the $28 million extension of the 109 to Box Hill opening on May 2, 2003, a $7.5 million extension along Docklands Drive in Docklands opened on January 4, 2005, and a $42.6 million extension of the 75 to Vermont South opening on 23 July 2005. It was announced on September 27, 2010, that Bombardier Transportation had won a $303 million contract to supply and maintain 50 new E class trams. The contract includes an option for a further 100. They will be built at Bombardier's Dandenong factory, with the propulsion systems and bogies coming from Bombardier's factories in Mannheim and Siegen, Germany, respectively. The trams will be 33 meters long and have a capacity of 210 passengers and are due to be in service in 2013. The first E-Class tram arrived at Preston Workshops in late June 2013 for testing, with the first two E-Class entering revenue service in November 2013. In April 2012, Public Transport Victoria, a new statutory authority was formed after amendments to the Transport Integration Act 2010 and the Passing Off the Transport Legislation Amendment Act 2011. PTB assumed responsibility from the Director of Public Transport for the provision and administration of Victoria's transport services. It also provides information on fares, transport services and initiatives, and is responsible for overseeing and improving Victoria's public transport services. The era since privatization has also brought large patronage increases, an increase in platform stops, and a new ticketing system. In 1999 to 2000 year, when the tram system was privatized, patronage was 127.3 million per annum, this has increased almost each year since, and in the 2012 to 2013 year was 182.7 million passenger trips, a 4.2% year-on-year patronage increase, trams are the second most utilized public transport method, between trains and buses. Yara Trams, the Department of Transport, and later Public Transport Victoria, are introducing level boarding stops to improve accessibility and safety, and comply with the Disability Discrimination Act. As of January 2014, 360 accessible stops have been constructed, all since 1999. The MetCard ticketing system, which operated from 1996, was switched off on December 29, 2012, leaving Mickey which has been in operation on Melbourne trains since December 29, 2009, and valid on Melbourne trams and buses since July 25, 2010, as the sole ticketing system. 24 numbered routes operate with a regular schedule on Melbourne's tram network. Route numbers suffix with the letter A terminate before the usual destination, divert from the usual route, or both, while services suffixed with the letter terminate or divert to their depots. The Melbourne tram fleet currently comprises 501 trams as of November 2014. Classification is based on the original system begun by the MMTB in 1921. The rolling stock is part of leases to Yara trams, with the W, Z, A and B class trams owned by the Victorian government, and the C class and D class as a resubject to lease purchase agreements, while the C2 class trams were leased from Mulhouse, France but are now state assets. W-class trams were introduced to Melbourne in 1923 as a new standard design. They had a dual bogey layout with a distinctive drop center section, allowing the centrally placed doors to be closer to the ground. The W-class was the mainstay of Melbourne's tramways system for 60 years. A total of 752 trams of 12 variants were built, the last of which in 1956. It was not until the 1980s that the W-Class started to be replaced in large numbers, and by 1990 their status as an icon for the city was recognised, leading to a listing by the National Trust of Australia. Public outrage over their sale for tourist use overseas led to an embargo on further export out of the country in 1993, though recently some have been given or loaned to various museums. Approximately 200 of the W-Class trams retired since then remain stored, and the future use of these trams is unknown. W-class trams have been sent overseas, 
Five went to Seattle between 1978 and 1993, where they operated on Seattle's George Benson Waterfront Streetcar Line from 1982, but suspended in 2005. Another nine are now part of the downtown Memphis Tourist Service, while several other U.S. cities have one or two. As of January 2015, there are approximately 230 W-class trams, about 165 are in storage, 27 are stored operational and ready reserve, 12 run on the city circle and 26 are used in revenue service. In January 2010, it was announced by the new transport minister to have the 26 W-class trams running the two inner-city routes, would be phased out by 2012, prompting a new campaign from the National Trust of Australia. In 2010, it was proposed to better utilize the unused W-class trams by refurbishing and leasing them as roving ambassadors to other cities, generating revenue which could then be invested back into the public transport system. In 2011 the Victoria government committed $8 million over four years for the restoration of W-class trams, with options for new routes to be considered. The development of new rolling stock to replace the W-class began in the early 1970s with a modern design, based on the Gothenburg. Sweden M28 design. The Z-Class trams, built by Koming, were introduced in 1975, starting with the Z1-Class. 100 Z1-Class trams were built between 1975 and 1979. The design was unpopular due to the limited number of doors and the position of the conductor's seat. Most of the Z1-Class trams were withdrawn following the introduction of the C, D and E-Class trams, the last Z1-Class withdrawn on April 23, 2016. Many were later sold at auctions, while others were donated to museums. In 1978 and 1979, 15 Z2-class trams, having little difference from the Z1-class, were built. As with the Z1-class, the Z2-class trams have been withdrawn from service. From 1979 to 1984, Z3-class trams were introduced. They had an additional door on each side of the tram. No conductor's console was provided, and smoother acceleration and braking compared to the Z1 class. 115 were built, 112 of which are in service. The A class trams were built between 1984 and 1986 by Koming. They were built in two runs, 28 A1 class trams being introduced into service between 1984 and 1985, and 42 A2 class trams between 1985 and 1986. They were similar. The major differences being the brakes and that the A1 class were built with trolley poles, while A2 class were built with pantographs. All but one that were built remain in service at present. The B class trams were first introduced to Melbourne in 1984 with the first prototype B1 class trams, the second being built in 1985. As of 2016, one is currently in regular service. The B class trams used the same traction equipment as the C3 and A class trams and were built for the light railings. They were originally built with movable steps to allow railway platform and street-level boarding, but this concept was later abandoned, with low-floor platform built at the converted light rail stations. B2-class trams entered service between 1988 and 1994. 130 trams were built by Koming, and later ABB Transportation all of which remain in service today. The B2-class was the first Melbourne tram fitted with air conditioning. Following the privatization of Melbourne's tram system, the private operators acquired new trams to replace the older Z-class trams. In 2001, Yara Trams introduced the low-floor C-class trams, a variant of the Citadies manufactured in France by Alstom. They are three-section articulated vehicles, with 36 in service. Five C2-class trams were introduced in 2008 after being leased from Mohaus in France. They have been dubbed Bumblebees due to their distinctive yellow color, and exclusively run on Route 96. It was announced in November 2010 that the state government was in negotiations to purchase the five C2-class trams, with the purchase finalized in 2013. The C-class trams are owned by Elko Entity and are subject to a lease purchase agreement. While the C2-class trams were leased from Societe Generale Entity, but were subsequently purchased by the Victorian government in the 2012-2013 year. The German-made Siemens Combino trams were introduced by the now-defunct M greater than tram. The Combino is a three-section or five-section articulated vehicle. Currently, 38 D1-class and 21 D2-class trams are in service. The D1-class and D2-class trams are owned by CBA Entity and are subject to a lease purchase agreement. 
Street. According to Time Out Melbourne, the D-Class trams are unpopular, due to a lack of seats and other concerns. The E-Class R3 section, four bogey articulated trams built at Bombardier Transportation Stand in Ong Factory. The propulsion systems and bogies were imported from Bombardier's Mannheim and Siegen factories in Germany. Bombardier was selected on 27 September 2010 following a tendering process for 50 new low-floor trams, which was opened in 2009. The $303 million contract is for supply of 50 trams with maintenance ADO 2017, and includes an option for a further 100 trams. The trams are based on the Flexity Swift design. The E-Class trams are the first locally built Melbourne trams since the B-Class in 1994. The trams are 33 meters long and 2.65 meters wide, have anti-slip flooring, are air-conditioned, have automatic audio-visual announcements and a passenger capacity of 210. A two-thirds mock-up, produced for design input, was unveiled on August 24, 2011 and was displayed at the 2011 Royal Melbourne Show. Although originally anticipated to be delivered in 2012, design complexity slowed down construction. Delaying delivery of the first tram. The first T class tram arrived at Yara Trams Preston Workshops on 28 of June. In September 2013, there were two E class trams at Preston Workshops undergoing non passenger testing in preparation for introduction to service in late 2013. The first two trams entered service on November 4, 2013, and were joined by a further three at the start of 2014. According to Time Out Melbourne, the E-Class are the city's tram passengers' favorite due to their size, design and comfort. The following table lists patronage figures for the network during the corresponding financial year. Australia's financial years start on 1 July and end on 30 June. Major events that affected the number of journeys made or how patronage is measured are included as notes. Melbourne's trams run out of eight depots. Melbourne's tram system operates on 600-volt DC electricity provided to the overhead lines by a network of 50 substations spread across the network. Electricity is supplied to these substations in either 6,600, 11,000, or 22,000 volt AC and is then stepped down, and rectified to 600 volt DC. The overhead system is further separated into 100 sections, this is done for two reasons, one is to maintain voltage and current across the network, and two is to isolate disruptions when issues relating to the electrical transmission system occur. The most common disturbances to the supply system are overheight vehicles, falling tree limbs, damaged poles, and fires nearby to overhead wires. Since 2013 Yara trams have been provisioning for the upgrade of substations across the network. This is due to the increased amount of current required by newer trams such as the E-Class and other low-floor trams scheduled for wider deployment across the system. Additionally, they are concurrently planning for the further segmentation of the supply network further isolating disruptions caused by disturbance to the supply system. In January 2017, the state government announced tenders to power Melbourne's tram network with solar power, to be supplied at Mildura with a new 75 m solar power plant by the end of 2018. There are currently three level crossings where trams and trains cross each other, Glen Ferry Road, Kuyung, Glen Huntley Road, Glen Huntley, and Riversdale Road, Camberwell. The Glen Huntley Road crossing has been slated for removal and separation in an election commitment to expand the level crossing removals project by Premier Daniel Andrews. To accommodate the differing voltages of the 600-volt tram and 1,500-volt train systems each of these level crossings is fitted with an overhead square, which can isolate the section of overhead wiring above the crossing and apply the appropriate voltage. When the signal box adjacent to the crossing interlocks the gates for trains to pass through, 1,500 volts is applied, while when the gates are up 600 volts is applied. Historically many tram train level crossings have operated in Melbourne, all but the aforementioned three have been grade separated, or the tramway or railway has been abandoned. The first were built during the cable tram system's operation, with much reluctance on behalf of the Victorian railways. Many more were built after the emergence of electric trams in 1906 often causing disputes between tramway operators and the Victorian railways. Melbourne's trams, especially the W-Class, are an icon of Melbourne and an important part of its history and character. Trams have been featured across several media, and in tourism advertising since World War II. Trams are heavily featured in the movie Malcolm, one scene of the controversial film Alvin Purple and feature in the music video clips for the Beastie Boys' The Rat Cage and ACDC's It's a Long Way to the Top.
Among songs written about Melbourne's trams are Touric Tram by Bernard Bolin, and Taking the Tram to Carnegie by the band Oscar. The Eastern Suburbs Professional Community Theatre Company, known as Theatre Works staged a performance on a 109 tram entitled Storming Mod Albert B. Tram, between 26 February and March 14, 1982 as part of the Melbourne Moomba Festival. It was written by Paul Davis and directed by Mark Scherfs and was revived in 1992 and 1998. For the Melbourne 2006 Commonwealth Games a Z-Class tram was decorated as a Karachi bus by a team of Pakistani decorators. Dubbed the Karachi tram, it operated on the City Circle tourist route during the Commonwealth Games. The centerpiece of the opening ceremony was a flying class tram, specially built for the event, from original W-Class plans and photos. In 2006 a W-Class Tram 965 was gifted from the city of Melbourne to Australian Mary Donaldson and her fiancé, Danish Crown Prince Frederick, on the occasion of their marriage. The tram now runs at the Danish Tram Museum of Sporveismasi. On October 26, 2011, a Z3-Class Tram, specially liveried as a royal tram was used to convey Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh from Federation Square to Government House, along St. Kilda Road during their visit to Melbourne. The Royal Tram was in regular service for a little over a year following the event. From 1978 to 1993 36 W-class trams were painted with artwork as part of the Transporting Art Project. The idea was conceived in early 1978 by Melbourne Lord Mayor Irvin Rockman and artist Clifton Pugh, with the idea backed by then-Premier Rupert Hamer. Over the lifetime of the project many notable local artists participated, including Mir Kimura, Michael Lunig, Howard Arkley, and Reg Mombasa. The idea was reprised as part of a collaboration between Arts Victoria, Yara Trams and the Melbourne International Arts Festival in 2013. A competition launched in May 2013 to select eight designs, with one art tram to operate out of each Melbourne tram depot. The first of the new Melbourne art trams, W Class 925 was launched on September 30, 2013 by then-Premier Dennis Nipthine and Yara Tram CEO Clement Michel, with the remaining seven trams to be introduced in the following two weeks. The last was introduced into service on October 11, 2013. Melbourne Art Trams have continued to be refreshed and introduced annually since 2013, with over 48 artists featured. In 2018 the program was extended for a further three years through to 2021 and featured the first interactive art tram designed by D.R. Troy Innocent for Melbourne International Games Week. The trams can be found on the network throughout the year by entering the corresponding tram number and the MyTram feature of the Tram Tracker app. The prime rail-related statute in Victoria is the Transport Integration Act. The act was enacted to provide an overarching legislation for Victoria's transport system. It requires state agencies charged with providing transport services to work together towards an integrated transport system, and requires state planning bodies to consult the act when making decisions that will affect the transport system. The act establishes Transport Safety Victoria as Victoria's safety regulator for bus. Maritime and Rail Transport. The Act also establishes the independent office of the Director, Transport Safety, though who the regulatory function is carried out with the support of TSV. Another important piece of legislation is the Rail Management Act 1996, whose purpose is to establish a management regime for Victoria's rail infrastructure. The safety of tram operations in Melbourne is regulated by the Rail Safety Act 2006, which applies to all rail operations in Victoria. The Act establishes a framework containing safety duties for all rail industry participants and requires operators who manage infrastructure and rolling stock to obtain accreditation prior to commencing operations. Accredited operators are also required to have a safety management system to guide their operations. Sanctions applying to the safety scheme established under the Rail Safety Act are contained in the Part 7 of the Transport Act 1983. The safety regulator for the rail system in Victoria including trams is the director, Transport Safety, whose office is established under the Transport Integration Act 2010. Rail operators in Victoria can also be the subject of no-blame investigations conducted by the chief investigator, Transport Safety. The chief investigator is charged by the Transport Integration Act with conducting investigations into rail safety matters including incidents and trends. Ticketing requirements for trams in Melbourne are mainly contained in the Transport Regulations 2006 and the Victorian Fares and Ticketing Manual.
Rules about safe and fair conduct on trams in Melbourne are generally contained in the Transport Act 1983, and the Transport Regulations 2005. Official. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.